if you have your Bibles with you tonight, and I hope that you do, I want you to turn with me to uh, 1 Samuel. And uh, tonight we're going to be talking about religion without God, losing uh, God in religion. There are a lot of people that are trying to live a Christian life without God. There are a lot of people who are getting up in the morning and trying to go throughout the day and, 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 and not having Jesus Christ in their life. I want you to look with me in 1 Samuel chapter 4, verse 1 through 11. We uh, kind of have been all around this passage of Scripture before revival uh, started. But in 1 Samuel chapter 4, verse 1 through 11, it says, The word of God came, the word of Samuel came to all of Israel. Now Israel went out against the Philistines to battle and pitched beside Ebenezer, and the Philistines pitched in Aphek. And the Philistines put themselves in array against Israel, and when they joined battle, Israel was smitten before the Philistines. And they slew the army in the field, about 4,000 men. And when the people were coming to the camp, the elders of Israel said, Wherefore hath the Lord smitten us today before the Philistines? Let us fetch the ark of the covenant of the Lord out of Shiloh unto us, that when it cometh among us, it may save us out of the hand of our enemies. Now I want you to notice that. Didn't say anything about God. Didn't say anything about God going before them. Didn't say anything about God going into battle with them. Said, let's go get the ark. So the people sent to Shiloh that they might bring forth thence the ark of the covenant of the Lord of hosts, which dwelleth between the cherubims and the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, were with the ark of the covenant of God. And when the ark of the covenant of God came into the camp, all Israel shouted with a great shout, so that the earth rang again. And when the Philistines heard the noise of the shout, they said, What meaneth the noise of this great shout in the camp of the Hebrews? And they understood that the ark of the Lord was come into the camp. And the Philistines were afraid, for they said, God is coming to the camp. And they said, Woe unto us. For there hath not been such a thing heretofore. Woe to us! Who shall deliver us out of the hand of these mighty gods? These are the gods that smote the Egyptians with all the plagues in the wilderness. Be strong and quit yourselves like men, O ye Philistines, that ye be not servants unto the Hebrews, as they have been to you. Quit yourselves like men and fight. And the Philistines fought, and Israel was smitten. Did you, did you catch that? Israel was smitten by their enemies without the ark. They were smitten by their enemies with the ark. And they fled every man to his tent. There was a great slaughter for the fellow of Israel, 30,000 men. The ark of God was taken, and two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, were slain. Heavenly Father, help us tonight to realize that, Father, religion is about putting our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And people can be religious and still be lost. People can still go to church and still be lost. And Father, I just pray tonight that we'd see that what we need most in our life tonight is the presence of God is Jesus Christ, the Savior and Lord of our life, and being led by His Spirit, and Father, being obedient to Him in all that we do. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You know, a lot of people have church, and Jesus is not in the service. I was reading about a church that when they prayed, it was the practice in the church that when they were praying, half of the people would stand up when the prayer was being prayed, and the other half would sit down while the prayer was being prayed. The people that were standing up would yell at the people sitting down and say, you need to stand up, we're praying. 
and the people that were sitting down would yell at the people standing up and say, no, you need to sit down while we're praying. Well, a new pastor came to the church, and this happened in the church service a couple of times, and he really didn't know what to do, and he was asking what uh, he might do, and somebody said, well, won't you go talk to the oldest deacon in the church? He probably knows more about this than anybody else. New pastor said, where is the oldest deacon? said, well, he's in the nursing home. So this new pastor went to the nursing home, and he's visiting with this oldest deacon, and and, and he said, I, I've got a problem in the church. He said, when we pray, he said, part of the church stands up, part of the church sits down. Ones that are standing up, yell at the ones sitting down. The ones that are sitting down, yell at the ones that are standing up. And, and he asked the deacon, he said, I just want to ask you. He said, you've been a member of this church, you've been a deacon of this church for years. Is it the tradition of the church that when we pray that people stand during the prayer? And the old deacon said, no, that's not the tradition of the church. Well, the pastor said, well then, is it the tradition of the church that we sit down to pray? And the old deacon said, no, that's not the tradition of the church either. And by this time, the pastor really didn't know what to say, and he said, but the people argue all the time. They yell at each other while we're praying. And the old deacon interrupted, and he said, that's the tradition. <laughs> you know, over time, people can get so lost in the rituals of tradition and the forms of tradition that they forget about the real reason that they're doing what they're doing. And that's to worship the Lord Jesus Christ. And they forget about their relationship with God. You know, the looks of worship are there. The looks of being religious is there. But they're a long way from being right with God. Let me ask you something before we ever start tonight. Is God missing from your life tonight? Do you have the look of a Christian, but not a close relationship with Jesus? If our relationship with Jesus Christ is right, then everything else is going to fall into the right place. But if our relationship with Jesus Christ is wrong, folks, nothing in your life is going to be right. Christianity is about a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And I just want to start tonight before I say anything else. Don't lose God in your religion. Everything we do needs to be focused on Jesus. You know, I just read this passage of Scripture, and it, it said 4,000 men were lost in the battle. And the people came back into camp, and, and the elders began to, to question. And in verse number 3, it says, Wherefore hath the Lord smitten us today before the Philistines? You know, the question that they were asking was the right question. Why has this happened to us? But it was addressed to the wrong person because it wasn't addressed to God himself. They were venting their frustrations for what had happened, but they were not seeking God's wisdom. They were not seeking God's help. And you say, well, how do you know that? Will you read the very next line of that third verse? And they answered their own question. They said, Let us fetch the ark of the covenant unto the Lord out of Shiloh unto us, that when it cometh among us, it may save us out of the hand of the enemy. They didn't say, God, why has this happened? God, we need you. God, we've forsaken you. God, you've not been a part of what we've been doing. God, we need you. Instead, they said, why has this happened to us? I know what let's do. Let's go fetch the ark. They thought the ark would solve all of their problems. They said, let's just bring the ark of God along with us, and we'll take the ark of God into battle with us, and, and we'll win the battles, and we'll eventually win the war because the ark is symbolic of God's presence. Church, 
We don't need something that is symbolic of God's presence. We need the presence of God. And we need the power of God. They said, he'll go with us. And in light of all that was happening to them, you can see here Israel was trusting the ark instead of putting their faith and trust in God. They said, the ark's going to change our fate. The ark's going to bring us victory. Folks, Israel was treating the ark of God like a good luck charm. They said, let's just go fetch the ark. We'll bring the ark along with us, and as long as we've got the ark with us, everything's going to be a success. We won't have to worry about anything. Folks, we do the very same thing as Christians today. The ark of the covenant of God was a chest. It was made out of acacia wood. It was covered with gold. And inside it was placed the two tablets of the Ten Commandments. And there was a pot of manna and, and there was Aaron's rod. The lead was called the mercy seat. And it was a gold plate surrounded by two cherubs. It had their wings outspread. It's where the Lord's presence met with Moses. It was a symbol of God's presence. Folks, that's what it was. It was a symbol of God's presence. God led the people out of Cana. The people followed God. And when they followed God, God led them where they needed to be. Now Israel says, we need that ark again so that we can win the war. Folks, they didn't have a desire to seek God. They didn't have a desire to understand God's word or God's will. They didn't want God's presence. They wanted something that was symbolic of God's presence. They wanted the ark. They just wanted to achieve their own goals and to achieve their own purposes using the ark instead of following God. Folks, that sound familiar to us today? There are many people today who do not seek God for God's sake. They seek God for their sake. They don't seek God in order to be able to do God's will. They seek God that they might be able to do their will and achieve their purposes and their goals. They seek God to gratify their own personal needs. Focus. When we focus only on the form of religion, what we get is just religion without God, without power, without purpose, because we've lost God in religion. Not too long ago, we were looking in Acts chapter 19. You remember that story. There were some Jews that were going around trying to drive out the evil spirits. And as they were going around trying to drive out the evil spirits, they were using the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. They would come to an evil spirit and they'd say, In the name of Jesus in whom Paul preaches, I command you to come out. And you remember they came to an evil spirit one day and the evil spirit looked at him and said, You know, I know Paul and I know Jesus, but I don't have any idea who you are. Folks, they had religion without God. They just had the form of religion without any power. They were just copycats without a religion because they didn't have, or without Jesus because they didn't have Jesus in their heart. Folks, Christianity is about a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. The elders of Israel was trying to manipulate God. They were trying to manipulate God into giving them the victory just because they had the ark going with them and the ark going before them when God was a long way from their hearts and their relationship wasn't right with God. Folks, listen to me tonight. You and I don't bargain with God. We submit to God. The power lies with God. And that's what we need tonight, church. We need God's power. There is no special power in the forms of religion or the methods of religion or the rituals of religion.
But folks, when we seek God and we look to God and we claim power in the blood of Jesus, He blesses us because that's where the power is. And that's where our help comes from. If we focus on the ark or if we focus on religion and we leave God out of it, you and I get nothing. And we are nothing. Second mistake Israel made was that they expected God's blessings without repentance. Look with me in verses 4 and 5. So the people sent to Shiloh that they might bring forth the, thence the ark of the covenant of the Lord of hosts which dwelleth between the cherubims and the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas were there with the ark of the covenant of God. And when the ark of the covenant of the Lord came into the Israel, all came into the camp, all Israel shouted with a great shout so that the earth rang again. The people came to take the ark. I want you to notice something there. It said the people came and got the ark and the priest followed it. Did you catch that? Instead of the priest seeking God and the priest giving direction to God's people, instead of them sharing God's word with the people, the people came, took the ark, and the priest just followed the people. The people take the ark, and the priest follow the people. And the Bible says when the ark arrived at the camp, it said all Israel raised a great shout of celebration, believing, well, we're going to win the war now. We're going to have victory now. We've got the ark with us. And it said it was so loud that the ground shook. And it said even the Philistines heard it from afar off. Folks, let me tell you something. It doesn't matter how loud you shout tonight. It won't bring you the victory. It won't bring you any closer to God. Psalm 51, verse 6 and 7 says, O Lord, Open thou my lips, and open, and my mouth shall show forth thy praises. For thou desirest not sacrifice, else I would give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offering. God wants us to praise Him for who He is and what He's doing in our life. He said, let's go get the ark. We'll take the ark with us, and we're going to win the victory. Folks, let me tell you something. That plan back, backfired in a big way. Without the ark, they lost 4,000 men. With the ark, they lost 30,000 men. And even with the ark, things didn't go the way they thought that it would go. And not only that, the ark was taken by the Philistines. And the two sons of Eli the priest died when they took the ark. And folks, things went from bad to worse because God wasn't in it. When Eli, the father of his two sons, Hophni and Phinehas, heard that the ark was taken and his two sons were dead, he was sitting in a chair, he fell over backwards in the chair, he broke his neck, and he died. His daughter-in-law, Phineas' wife, when she heard the news, went into premature labor, gave birth to a son, and died. And her last word was this, Name this child Ichabod, meaning the glory has departed from Israel. Do you know why the glory departed from Israel? Because they didn't repent. All they wanted was the ark. All they wanted something that was symbolic of the power of God without seeking God. Folks, repentance was needed then and repentance is needed now. Amen. Repentance is the only way our relationship can be restored with God. 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse number 30 says, Wherefore the Lord of God of Israel saith, I said indeed that thy house... And the house of thy father should walk before me forever. But now the Lord saith, Be it far from me. For them that honor me I will honor. 
and they de- that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. Folks, God created us to know Him. God created us to be obedient to His will. And we broke that relationship with God when we sinned. And God had to send His only begotten Son into the world to restore that fellowship. And when Jesus Christ offered up Himself on the cross as a punishment on our behalf, and when we put our faith in what Jesus did for us on the cross, the Bible says He reconciles us with God. In other words, He restores that relationship. Folks, to know God's presence is to deal with our sin. You cannot be in the presence of God and experience the power of God without realizing, woe is me. I am a sinner. I am undone. But when we call on Jesus, He will forgive us of our sin and He will renew us. And then and only then can we experience His presence and his victory in this life. Jesus said, I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And folks, there's so many people today that are living a discouraged, defeated life. And they say, I am a Christian. Folks, listen, if you're a Christian today and you've put your faith and trust in Jesus, his promise is, I gave you life and I gave it to you more abundantly, and if you don't have that life and have it more abundantly, then you don't have Jesus. And what you need is Jesus. I started by telling you this story about this church. I don't know if that's true or not. I just read that a long time ago. But I'll tell you something that is true. Bobby Carroll and I, when we were pastoring up in Church Hill, we'd come home about every other weekend and see our family. And one day we were coming through Morristown. I may have told this story before. But we were coming through Morristown. We got off and for some reason we came through Morristown. We didn't come through the bypass. And there was a huge church in Morristown. And we were coming toward that church and they had just put a new metal roof on the church. And coming at that church it had the brightest, prettiest red roof you had ever seen. That night we were going back. We went back the same way. Going back the other way, we come upon that same church. I looked at it, and they had the brightest, greenest metal roof you'd ever seen. And I told Bob Carroll, I said, that roof was red when we come by here this morning. We turned around and went back. The other side, one side was red, one side was green. About two or three weeks later, we were at our associational meeting. And I was talking to our director of missions. And I said, I saw the strangest thing the other day in Morristown. I said, we drove by this huge church. They'd put a new roof. One side was red, one side was green. He laughed. He said, I know that church. He said, I've been in that church before. He said, you know why one side of that roof is red and one side of it's green? He said, it come time to put a new roof on that church. They said, we need to put a new roof on the church. And they said, let's put a metal roof on the church. And everybody said, amen, let's put a metal roof. And one person stood up and said, let's put a red roof on the church. It'll stand out. Somebody else stood up and said, no, let's put a green roof on the church. That'll be pretty. And they argued about whether or not they were going to put a red roof or a green roof. And they argued and argued and argued and finally They put red on one side and green on the other side. And every time we'd go by that church, you know what I would think of? What kind of testimony does that give to the people that pass that church? They can't even decide on what color of roof to put on the church without fussing and fighting. Folks, that don't show the love of Jesus. That don't show the discernment of Jesus. God's not the author of confusion or division. And he's not going to tell Holbert to do one thing and Jim Creek to do something else. If his will is being done, he's going to reveal it to the same person. And we need to be close enough to God to know what God's will is.
I'm so thankful tonight that Highland Park Baptist Church, and I'm not saying this because I'm standing where I'm standing, but I've said this before. I've been in a lot of churches where I'd like to be sick on business meeting night. I've been in a lot of churches where I dread going to deacons meeting. But folks, it's a joy to come to Highland Park Baptist Church, whether we're having Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, business meeting, deacon meeting, whatever we're doing, because there's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. Why? Because God is number one, and our eyes are on Him. But folks, the devil is going to do everything he can to get our eyes off God and to cause division in the church. And we just need to make sure that in all that we do, Jesus is the main reason and the main thing in everything we do. Father, thank you for allowing us to be in your house tonight. Father, thank you for the sweet, sweet spirit that's in this place tonight, that was in this place this morning, in this place during the nights and days of revival. And we know that it's the presence of the Lord. But the old devil's going to do everything he can to destroy that relationship and that fellowship and that spirit that we have with him. Father, thank you tonight. Greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. But there's a lot of churches that are having church tonight and they're just going through the form of, of worship. They're going through the rituals of worship. And just like the Israelites who took the ark and said, God is with us. The ark was symbolic of God's presence. Folks, we need the real thing. We need Jesus Christ. We need God himself in all that we are and all that we do. If you're here tonight and you're lost without Jesus, if you've never claimed Him as your Savior and Lord, I pray you'd come tonight and be saved. If you're here tonight and you've strayed away from God in your relationship, I pray you'd come tonight and say, God, I'm just going through the motions. God, I have the forms of being a Christian. People look at me and think that I'm a Christian. But God, I just have the symbolic presence of you I want you to take charge of my life. I want to repent of my sins and rededicate my life to you. I pray for other decisions that are in this place tonight. Father, don't let us leave here tonight without being sensitive to the leadership of the Holy Spirit, being obedient to your will for our